Welcome back to The Charismatic Voice. I admit that I watched today's video immediately after it was released because I couldn't resist hearing two of Home Freeze members tackle my favorite tenor aria. But then I started receiving lots of messages from y'all saying, please do an analysis. So I put it away for a couple of weeks to freshen up the ears and I'm gonna do my first deep dive analysis of this right now with you. Let's get to it. I thought I'd remembered that they switched off parts, so I wanted to hear them both do a line or sort of a section first. Also, I actually know where good stopping parts are in this aria. So uh, for once, I might not stop it at one of the worst times possible. Um, immediately, one of the things that uh, has come back to me is Rob's voice feels like it's got a lot of uh, natural thickness available in the sound. There's more heft to the sound. And overall, he sounds more naturally operatic. I'll get to what some of those things are that make me think more operatic, whereas I get a lot more country still in Austin's voice, which is funny because it's titled Two Country Singers Trying, or Two Country Singers Try Singing Opera. I have to say, though, like this is this isn't easy to do. They're doing a smashing job of it. I hear a little countryisms a little more in Austin's voice than Rob's. Um, but also Austin just took the top line there, which uh, if you've seen it on the internet, there's a really funny video of Ingo Tizza singing this. Ingo Tizza is a straw guy. He sings this with Pavarobati at one point where he created a robot that essentially sings the top lines for him. It's hilarious, go check it out if you get a chance. But right now we're gonna go back to these guys. Um, I'm gonna go back to the beginning and mention a couple of really awesome things along the way. We're probably gonna go back quite a bit. This was nice seeing. Um, I caught that this, I caught this this time that Austin is leaving a cowboy hat behind. I really think this is symbolizing that he's jumping off and going into the opera depths, uh, leaving country behind. I, I like that. Also that intro music isn't necessarily from the opera, right? Okay. I know, I told you, we're gonna stop and go back and analyze lots of pieces of this. I love this intro. So just looking at the heft or weight of the voice immediately, if you can pick out Rob's voice in there, you can pick out Austin's voice. Chances are you'll notice that Austin's voice, especially on the lower note, sounds a little bit lighter. Overall, his instrument just, I would say that the vocal folds might not be as uh, thick or long. They're, I, anatomically, 
Austin's instrument is naturally lighter than Rob's is. Now, Rob can lighten up his instrument and Austin can make his instrument more heavy. This is, uh, this is something they've trained and developed to be able to adjust different amounts of weight in their voice. However, there will always be a natural tendency in a voice towards being heavier or lighter. Uh, I wouldn't say that Rob's is particularly heavy, okay? Like he's not super dramatic. He's not a held in tenor. Um, but uh, Austin is definitely the lighter tenor of the two, even though they are both tenors. Okay, one more time. See if you can distinguish the difference between their voices as they're singing the same notes side by side. Okay, one more thing. I know, I'm pausing and talking a lot, but I really like the vibe between the two. Austin just gave Rob such a sweet look of like, hey man, I'm so glad that we get to sing opera together. <laughs> it's like a little bromance happening. <laughs> They look great in suits. So I'm watching Faith a little bit here, but this is very clearly uh, not the same recording that they've made on the screen as what I'm hearing audibly. Um, the, I mean, they've matched everything up very well, and I think they're actually singing during the, the video filming. We just know that they don't have the mics right there in front of them, so we're not actually getting the recording version. Uh, Rob... Definitely sounds to me like he's got some major classical training. This is coming up largely in the Italian and the roundness of his mouth shapes. Uh, you can hear that in addition to seeing it some too. Um, I'm going to go back and point out some of these things. It happens immediately. <laughs> right there. The ah vowel is one of those dead giveaways to me if a person has had classical training specifically in singing Italian opera. If they sing an ah that is brighter while still having a really warm quality to it, <laughs> then I go, oh, okay, they worked on that ah vowel quite a bit. I know, little tiny details, but when you get that ah vowel hooked in in an operatic sound, it makes a huge difference. You can base an entire sound off of that. Um, the thing that a lot of English singers or Native Americans, uh, uh, Native American singers will do, meaning people that live in the United States, first language English, uh, they will end up singing uh instead of ah. So instead of principe sa, Ah, which is a really nice ah sound. They'll say principessa and they'll say uh and make it a schwa. So it's a neutral sound for Americans. It's considered uh, a big faux pas to do that when singing Italian. And Rob has a beautiful ah uh, vowel. It's gorgeous, gorgeous, very Italian. Uh, back one more time here. <laughs> That ooh is really nice too. They're good vowels. Italian is so hard to sing really well in. Uh, he's doing a great job. I know that ah vowel is one of the great things in there. The I like that he's giving doubles to the double consonants. Those are really important. Um, I think Italian singers would probably double them a little bit more than he is right now. One of the only things that sounds still a little country to me is the L. We have a, 
like a very liquid L in American English. L. And L's in Italian to be, tend to be a lot more flicked, a lot more la la la, a lot more towards the front of the mouth. And then when you have a double as well, uh, a lot of times uh, Americans will end up giving a little bit of that liquidity back in it instead of keeping the flicky nature that Italians have. That was pretty good though. I just really like the full space that he has got going on though. I, I like many like hats off to him. Really gorgeous, full, rounded space, rounded lips. And in addition, his vibrato is, uh, it's got a nice steadiness to it, a good width for opera, uh, beautiful phrasing as well. Anyway. Okay, we'll keep going. My mio mistero è chiuso in me. Il nome mio da son sabra. No, no, sulla tua bocca. Dirò quando la luce. <laughs> so I like that Austin does this hook in on Splen. That's a typical thing that tenors often do on this aria. It helps to bring a little more heft into that sound, a little more depth in the tone quality. Um, there's also something both of them are doing that's really nice, which is they continually have this inner smile, and that can help with some of the spacing and tone quality overall in the sound. Austin's voice, though, sounds like it still hangs out a little more in the country, partly because of the vowel shape. Um, it's The vowels are less tall. If you take a look at his mouth versus Rob's mouth, Rob's is more open, like has more space here, and Austin's has a little bit less. Um, still decent vowels though. Uh, beautiful sustaining from both of them though. Sustaining really long lines like this is difficult. It requires endurance. Uh, and I'm actually really not surprised that they're good at doing it. Uh, I've heard them sustain incredible lines in other repertoire as well. And that definitely helps to cross over. I'm going to go back to uh, Austin's part here. Ah! I think he got some good Italian coaching for this. Makes me super happy. Like that last May, a lot of people would sing May if they were doing country and go to the second part of a diphthong that would appear in American English. Uh, for this case, he leaves it on that pure vowel. There's still little countryisms in there but uh, he's clearly worked on it. <laughs> I like I like hearing that attention to detail. also really appreciate the way he hooks back up his support on Quando and the way he's planned out his breaths here. They're, they're dead on. That's a, that's sort of an example of a place where the mouth is more wide and a little shallower. In uh, opera singer's voice, you'd see a little more roundness in this area. Nice hook. Okay, so one of the other differences I hear in their voices is in that back spacing. I mentioned earlier just taller vowels. 
Um, Rob will seem a little more operatic uh, because he's got those taller vowels. Um, but there's also backspace here, like in the pharyngeal area, or the feeling of if you have an egg in the back of your throat, it's going to probably feel a little bit more operatic uh, versus having a sort of a stiffer, narrower space there. That will often make it a little more contemporary in nature. Uh, a lot of country singers end up going for twang and really aiming out this way, focusing on the sound. And opera singers will think about having more loft. There's some other ways to describe this sensation, uh, but... It all has to do with spacing inside and how you're focusing the sound. Um, so I hear a little less space overall in Austin's voice. He does have a really um, a good rate of a vibrato, but I think his vibrato has trained to be a little um, less wide than many opera singers will train their vibrato. In fact, uh, many opera singers <clears throat> will get a little too wide on the vibrato and then we have to work to narrow that back down. So better to err on the uh, narrower side there. Um, so the rate of it is is really good and very much in the style. Uh, it doesn't go as much away from the fundamental pitch though in his wavering as I might expect of an opera singer. But this is also partly, I think, because uh, he just has a lighter voice. He's trained it to stay light and agile and narrow and focused. And those kinds of things still stay imprinted in your muscle fibers. So it's really, anyhow, it's really, really fun to hear and hear what things he's shifted to make it what I would call more operatic in nature. Okay, we're gonna keep going. <gasps> The tenderness that Rob brings to this line right here. It's talking about a kiss. And it's like, it's a very tender moment and it goes lower, so it's a good spot to bring in some of that breathy tenderness, and he does it. Oh. oh my gosh, I'm sobbing so much. I'm sorry. I love this aria though. I really, really love it. I also really love Home Free, so it's so fun to see what they're doing with this. His mouth on the O, that's a that's that bigger rounded O thing I was talking about earlier that Austin has a little smile in there still. And like you can hear a little country kind of peeking through in that O vowel. <laughs> All right, a lot more O space. That's so sweet. Okay, we're gonna go back to this moment. Uh, and in particular, I just have to say, great job with the pacing of this phrase. There's a lot of rubato. There's a lot of push and pull of the tempo, meaning that um, it is not steady. It is not on a click track. And that's one of the things I love so much about opera, particularly uh, Bel Canto and Verismo styles is when we get to get away from a tempo and push it and then pull it back in line. And you can hear here that it's been adjusted multiple times. There are times when they slow it down and then times when they speed it back up. So I wanna go back here. Um, this is very tasteful and very stylistically correct. <laughs> Great hookup again. Oh. 
<laughs> I also really like that we had um, this moment of uh, harmony, which of course isn't in the aria itself because Koloff is one character and he sings it uh, himself. There is a moment in the chorus, interest. but anyhow, uh, that harmony is new and fun and I like it. <laughs> Also really interesting, looking at Rob's mouth, there are times that his tongue position reminds me of a, a Pavarotti tongue. Uh, okay, another moment that I really like. I like this portamento. A portamento is uh, usually a slide down and you see it a lot of times in Puccini, in particular in the style, where it's a slide down, you need to have vibrato in it as well. And uh, it is often sort of like a tumbling over of emotion. And he does that right here. <laughs> right? It feels like weeping as I'm going down. I, <laughs> I really love Portamenti. <laughs> Ooh. One more thing there. I, I know. I'm sorry. So many pauses, but you guys asked for it. So one of the great things about Pavarotti and I would say many successful te uh, tenors when they're singing this aria and other like gutsy, often dramatic tenor arias is they'll push it just a teensy bit sharp. And Rob does that right here on Pramonta. Ah, on that part, he goes just a tiny bit sharp to make our blood boil extra. Uh, go back and listen to those great, great singers. You'll hear that there's just a little edging up of that. It's one of the beautiful, beautiful things about opera and about not trying to correct a pitch to be 100% perfect. We want those moments to go just a tiny bit sharp. <laughs> That's a great example of the O vowels side by side. Like they both sound like O's. Rob's is a little more rounded than Austin's and that's one of the ways that their voices just sound a little bit different. Vincero. Vincero. We're, that's right, there's not the play out here. They do a great job. This is a hard moment to hold out and have all of the heft underneath without breaking. Uh, I've heard tenors crack on this moment and crack on some of the lines that Austin was taking on the top in particular. Um, those moments can get so much heft in them that uh, the vocal folds end up just having so much breath pressure underneath from bringing an extra volume. And that breath pressure is not able to be sustained underneath anymore. And then like a splats and creates a crack essentially in the voice. Oh, let's go back to somewhere. Those are good notes. I think it's Rob's voice that does like a nagam. It is like a little, uh, it uh, like almost like a little ornamentation on it. I've heard tenors do this before, where they give just a little lift into that note. Also, I love the offset that happens here. Both of them are so connected to their sound that getting off of the sound is also uh, a task to be done. <laughs> yeah. Aww.
overall, it's really delightful to hear these two come together in this aria. I love this aria so much. And I have to say, I was a little bit scared that I would go, hmm, not as good as what I want it to be. And that is not the way I feel whatsoever. I think that they've brought incredible connection and support and phrasing to it. They've said it in a super classy way. I don't mind that I hear little bits of countryisms coming through. Um, and they both definitely had that because they sing a ton of country music, right? But that's okay, right? They titled it, Two Country Singers Try Singing Opera. And I would say they didn't just try, they were very successful at singing opera. And it's interesting to hear a little bit of how that style affects some of these lines. So I dig it. I also really dig how they traded off the phrases together, sang some in harmony. Um, it was just a really, a really classy arrangement and well done. So congrats, Rob and Austin. Love what you're doing. I hope you do much more. If you would like to see some more analysis of Home For You, you can check out this playlist over here. And may you fall more in love with music every day.